uh, it's a mixed picture right now that we are seeing. The Taiwanese index, it's absolutely flat. The stock that I'm tracking is Lotus Laboratories. Important to see how that stock moves today. Yesterday, there was a big amount of delivery-based buying. This uh, fairly positive tone in the market is likely to continue maybe for two or three quarters. So the large-scale transformation project continue to remain on track, but the smaller ones are getting hit. CLS say they continue to reiterate the bear case here. They reiterate their sell because they say $88 per barrel is the break-even point for their marketing margins. So the first green tick is actually on the bank. Maybe it's not much. It was five points up. Nifty RT index is quite interesting that the recovery rally that you've seen from October lows last year is but basically back to the 2021 highs. How do the actual numbers look? Last year's champions, Chennai Super Kings, made a revenue of close to 273 crores and an EBITDA of 65 crores as well. It looks like it's going to be a quiet close to this week. This year also we are expecting same numbers, 70 mm. million square foot of a gross leasing and 40 plus million square foot of net leasing. Green looking screen, a massive recovery from the lows is what is underway. That was the day so far. Hello and welcome to Closing Bell live from the CNBC TV18 Motilal Oswal studio. I'm Reema Tendulkar and with me are Surbhi Upadhyay and Nigel D'Souza. And it's going to be a good close to what's been a volatile topsy-turvy week, right? Monday and Tuesday markets were under pressure. Wednesday was the first sign where you got some stability recovery from the intraday lows. Thursday was a solid session. And we followed it up. What a strong follow-up rally. 130 points on the Nifty. Sensex is up 300 points. And now, on a week-to-day basis, the Nifty is up 0.3%. The mid-cap index is up 1.5%. The small-cap index is inching towards a 2% rally. Well, that's right, Rima. You know, and 21,700 is what we were at earlier yeah. this week. And people are talking about 21,500. That too on low volumes. I won't be surprised by the time we end this fiscal year or by the end of next week, we'll be at 22,500. And the trigger for that is going to be the Nifty Bank because that's at around this 47,000 odd mark. If it can build on to that, you know, there's a crucial resistance at around 47,000 odd. We're only 100 points away from there. But yesterday as well, we made a dash to that. And the bears believe they have got this covered. So if the Nifty Bank can get past the 47,000 odd mark, I think 22,500 odd is on the cards. But so it'll be the big uh, positive has been the broader markets, right? No, broad, broader market recovery has been fantastic, but not just the broader market, I'd say even on the large cap screens, the fact that, you know, Nigel, you and I were discussing this in the morning, right, that if uh, IT is not going to play ball, then who will uh, pick up the pieces? And we've got some evidence, like you guys were mentioning, I mean, banks have kind of come to the party to an extent, and auto stocks, they are uh, zooming and, ro uh, you know, rooming all the way forward, the likes of your Maruti, Bajaj Auto, big buying in autos today, Aisha, all of these guys are up and about. Pharma is kind of throwing in uh, a little bit of green as well. Pharma and related healthcare. So Apollo Hospitals is one of the top nifty gainers as well. There's Sun Pharma, Sipla. So Pharma is uh, having a good session. And then you have, pull up the nifty contribution actually. That'll tell us, you know, which bats, batsmen are performing well and which are uh, sort of sitting out. Even on IT, the cuts have reduced. How we started the day at 9.15, compared to that, uh, it's looking much, much better right now. But yes, the big story for this market has been the mid-cap recovery. Uh, the mid-cap index right now sitting on a gain of 7 tenths of a percent. But, you know, if we look at the week gone by, the week-to-date tally, then after the mayhem that played out most of last week, this week we've got the mid-cap index up about 1.4%. Look at the small cap index, that's again up about 1.6%. So recovery, a little bit of a coming back of confidence, and the fact that we've got a follow-through today, negative uh, sort of start, uh, weak global markets, negative uh, news on IT, and even then for the market to recover, this would perhaps definitely be you know, a little reassuring for the bulls for sure. Well, that's right. Well, let's get a call on the index. Uh, then it's looking quite good. We're at the high point of the day. The bulls will be grabbing this with both hands. But how do you position yourself for the final hour of fray? Rahul Mohinder joins us to tell us exactly that. Hi, Rahul. Good afternoon, all set for the long weekend, but 60 minutes to go. What do you do in the next 60 minutes? I think, uh, first of all, the run-up that you've seen, I would probably term it as uh, not yet a breakout. I would term it as a bit of a corrective rally, if I could put it that way. Maybe we will, uh, you know, show up to levels of 22,200 to 22,300, and that's the window. That's the area where I think there could be some strong resistance. So, you know, is it worth taking a new long position now? No. Uh, is it worth getting a bit cautious, you know, as we approach the next 1500 points? Yes. So my stand is, uh, this is a bit of a short term up move, but I think the real clarity will come in once we start getting past levels of 22, 300. 
Otherwise, I would continue to term this as a bit of a corrective rally. If I look at it sectorally, I think it's going to be some of the index heavyweights and, you know, I would say sectorally, even the tech stocks, which could come under a bit of pressure. So I think that's where, uh, you know, my view comes from. And uh, stock specifically, yes, you could have performance, but I think again, broadly speaking, this is not a point to be initiating a new long trade. Okay, so some caution there, perhaps uh, you know, uh, warranted given that we've managed to recover quite a bit. So no long trades on either of the indices, Nifty or Bank Nifty. Uh, then what are you working with, Rahul? What are the stock trades that perhaps uh, you'd go with? As I told you, technology looks a bit weak to me. And, you know, let me start by uh, TCS. Although, yes, the stock's been, you know, it's down a good 60, 70 rupees, I believe, from uh, yesterday. But even now, I think the level of 3,900 uh, seems to be breaking down and, uh, you know, which is a level of support, which I envisage. Uh, we're challenging it. We haven't yet broken it. But, you know, this level breaking down would lead me to believe that, you know, 3,720 is on the cards for the stock. So, you know, keep a stop loss at about 39.75 and, you know, start looking at, uh, you know, those lower targets. Uh, there's clearly uh, some pressure within these tech stocks because of the kind of volume and price breakouts that we are seeing. Similarly, you know, let me add Infosys to that bracket. Uh, if you look at the way the stock's been moving, uh, of course, we've had a sharp cut, but I think this will, you know, continue to about 14, 40 levels. So even from here, I would still say uh, play the short. One of the stocks kind of seems to buck the trend at this point is Bharti et al. I think this stock can move to about 1310, uh, keeping a stop loss just below the 1200 mark. Okay, got that. Uh, Rahul, thank you very much uh, for the trades at this hour. Well, with that, let's move to the big story of the day. And really, it's the IT sector that's been in focus. And most of the stocks are still nursing losses anywhere between 1% to about 3%. And this after Accenture cut its uh, guidance for the year ahead. Rima is now on the wall to tell us the five top things that we should keep in mind while we're looking at this guidance cut from Accenture and its flow through or its impact on Indian listed IT stocks. Rima. Thanks so much for that. So first, why is Indian IT under pressure? Well, Accenture has cut the guidance. Now they're saying that for FI24, growth is going to stand at 1% to 3%, which compares with their earlier guidance of 2 to 5%. Now, if you look at the organic growth guidance, the cut is even steeper. They're now looking at the possibility of a negative growth. The new organic growth guidance for the year is minus 2 to 0%. They've also gone ahead and trimmed the margin guidance. The second is, why did they cut the guidance? What has changed in the last three months? Well, the company in its conference call said that they are seeing cuts in short cycle discretionary projects. So while clients continue to prioritize on large scale transformational projects, they're cutting back on discretionary spending when it comes to the smaller projects. And that has seen a further deterioration, the cutback in discretionary spends for smaller projects. And that's the reason why they've gone ahead and lowered the guidance. Now, the question is, how does this impact the Indian IT companies? Now, the risk is that FI25 forecasts, particularly on the top line, get scaled down. You know, earlier, the street expectation was that FI24 has been a dismal year for Indian IT. But things will rebound in FI25. You know, just a couple of months back, consensus expectation was for a near double-digit revenue growth for Indian IT. But Accenture is now talking about outsourcing revenue growth to be in mid-single digits. So the question is, will the top line, the revenue forecast for FI25, uh, you know, come under pressure? Will the pace of recovery be slower than what the street was anticipating? And here, all eyes will be on Infi and HCL Tech when they report their full year guidance in April. And that could have, it could be laced with conservatism and cautiousness. Now, moving on, what are brokerages saying uh, when it comes to the read-through for the Indian IT? CLSA says that IT continues to remain in an earnings downgrade cycle. And the earnings downgrade cycle is still not reflected in the current valuations which is why they are bearish. They've got a sell call across the IT sector. Morgan Stanley says that FY25 consensus revenue forecasts are at risk. The pace of recovery assumed over the coming quarters 
could be slower than except, uh, expected. But here, you know, I just want to put one point on the board that Accenture's numbers are as of 31st August 2024 because their financial year is different from the Indian IT companies. So when they're giving a forecast, they're giving a forecast only till August. And typically, when the Indian IT companies and the market men were forecasting a recovery in, in Indian IT, it was more in the second half of the year, which is not captured in Accenture's guidance. Now, how has Indian IT performed? Today, of course, you are seeing a correct in Indian IT names, but even in the run-up in the last couple of days, you've seen the Indian IT stocks underperform. And just one word, you know, on generative AI, because that's where all the hype is, excitement and optimism, Accenture has reported $600 million of generative AI bookings in the current quarter, which compares with $450 million in the prior quarter, so a 33% increase on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, and the first half of the year bookings stand at $1 billion. Back to you. Okay, all right, Rima, got that. Thanks very much. And that's a really important point to keep in mind. The timing is really important. But Accenture's year ends in August. So the guidance that they're talking about is valid only up till August, whereas when we'll get now, we'll get Infosys's guidance, and that's the entire fiscal year, FY25. So how should one be placing their bets in IT and, of course, in the rest of the market? Gurmeet Chadda is joining in. He's uh, our guest on the show this afternoon. Gurmeet, uh, happy Friday to you. Hope it's happy tidings because the markets decided to now stop sulking, at least in, in the near term. But first question, of course, has to be IT. Now, the thing is, I was just taking a look at the rally from the Q3 earnings onwards, right? Because suddenly the stocks were rallying as if the worst is over. And the rally till the top was about 12%. Since then, the IT index has given off around 6%. So it's given up half the gains. And now we, we're dealing with this uh, Accenture news. Uh, what would you be doing with large cap IT? Uh, so, uh, hi, hi Sophie. Uh, so, I think you've got to talk, you know, differentiate. I think there are some companies where the discretionary spend is relatively lower in large cap. For example, if you see HCL, it's IT, IT services, it's engineering research and design, and then you have products and platforms. Last quarter, they did a great job, obviously led by EID, and the product and platform business doing well. Also, see it vertical-wise in terms of the dependency on North American clients, how much it is financial services, how much is retail, how much is life sciences, how much is tech, etc. Uh, so you have to differentiate there. And I think uh, companies which strike a right balance between, so I think nobody is disputing that the long-term bookings for, for Gen AI will go up. But if you have a mix, which is, let's say, which is, let's say, practical modernization, if I call in a very layman language, which is projects related to SAP modernization or cloud migration, if you have a good mix of short-term projects and long-term bookings on Gen AI and, and other stuff, I think those companies will get differentiated. So I think, I like HCL. I think there's still valuation comfort. Uh, they maintained, they were the only company who actually did well last year in large cap IT in terms of guidance, other than maybe a little bit of TCS. And we go down a little too on mid cap IT, which is, so I like KPIT, which is partly auto, case and EV and, and partly IT. I think it's, it's given a 25% correction from 700 levels to 1300 odd levels and Tata Tech. So these are the three companies we are looking at and probably looking at opportunities to add on dips. Okay, all right. Hi, Gurmeet. Good afternoon. Good to see you. When the story of this week and this year actually has been the auto space, particularly Maruti. Bro, that stock is up and about. In this month, people are talking about volatility. The stock is up nearly around 10%. Year to date as well, we're talking about the Nifty. Either it's a little higher, a little lower, and you know that sort of a debate going on. But Maruti is up close to 15%, and today it's moving in style. What's your view on this one? Uh, I always believe, Nigel, that business performance leads to price performance eventually. I think I, I think it's been a good turnaround in Marathi, especially last three, four quarters. I think I think they were late in the hybrid and EV game. Now they are catching up. They were late in the UV and SUV segment. You know, two-thirds of the vehicles sold now are, are SUVs and UVs. I think it's it's on back of back-to-back -back great launches. Also, if you see the product mix, you know, it's a nice mix of CNG, hybrid, and now they're also talking of uh, CY25 being, uh, you know, for BEV, where the range could be 500 kilometers not. So I think it's a better improved product mix. It's reflecting in double-digit margin. You remember the margins had become single-digit. And that's why we saw that underperformance for almost four years from almost 2018 to the most part of 23, maybe, or first part of 23. Uh, I think for next year, probably you have to be a little careful because in small car, they still have a 70% market share. Now, how much of that they can really turn around in UV and other segments, I think, you know, you would like to see on, on that higher base. And the entire industry also is on a higher base. So maybe the next year note in PV would be high single digit and not double digit, which we have seen. Uh, but but impressed with what they have done. We would still like 
uh, something like Mahindra and Tata Motors in terms of the pecking order uh, and the value chain related to, to both of them in terms of, you know, both the SUV and hybrid and EV adoption picking up. Hmm. What about Bata and Metro brands? Today, these stocks are in focus because Goldman has initiated coverage. They're talking about uh, a rise in penetration of the branded footwear, athleisure doing well, where anyway, Metro brands has a partnership with Fila. Do you like Bata or Metro? And what about a company like Relaxo Footwear? Uh, somehow, uh, you know, you know, I've not been very good at calculating the right cash flows and return ratios for these companies. End of the day, you are a branded retailer for shoes. Uh, uh, and have, you have very little more, with no disrespect to any of these pairs. Uh, it's just that, you know, to, you know if, you, if you want to buy something on the consumption side for long term, you should be looking at long term growth, high ROEs of 20%, great margins, etc. We find that more in the food space right now. I'm not comparing again, you know, or, or a bit in the apparel exports now. I think that's where the opportunity size is, is much bigger. We are looking at, you know, the likes of Tata Consumer. LT Foods is something we are tracking very closely. And there are more consumption lanes. I think even on the travel side, there has been a healthy correction both in Safari and VIP hasn't done much. I think the travel story in terms of people traveling more, the hotels have participated, the other stocks have participated, but I don't think so. The, the luggage makers have participated as much. So we're looking at that side more right now compared to, uh, you know, uh, the food, uh, the food, food details. Okay, all right. Uh... Oh, you know, Gurmeet, what about Lotus Laboratories? You know, that's a stock I think you'll had a view earlier on. Last couple of days, the stock is moving and it's moving quite well. Uh, you know, at technical levels, if you pull up uh, maybe a 20 DMA with the stock, you'll see that it's nearing that resistance level. But what's the view on it at around 400 rupees? So, uh, this is a very lumpy business. You have to track how many molecules are in stage two, stage three. Uh, and you never know, you could have, you know, suddenly one quarter which gives you, let's say, 100, 200 million dollars revenue. We saw that during COVID with both DVs and Loris when they got the COVID uh, molecule commercialized. Uh, Loris, for example, now if you see, they've almost been spending almost 20% of the top line on R&D. The scientists make up almost like 25, 30% of the workforce. Uh, we still got upset over the capital allocation. I think they probably they are more scientists than, <laughs> than you know, capital allocators. I think some of the molecules are in stage three. There are three of them which are in stage three. They've been also acquiring and doing some work on skin cancer, etc. Maybe street, I'm not I'm not a scientist. Maybe street has a whip of something getting commercialized soon. Something what happened in, in 21 when it, it ran up from 70 to 70, 700. So we made a basket actually. We have we have Mulet, we have Loris, and we have DVs. Uh, and that's how you have to play this because you don't know what, what does better at what point of time. For us, uh, you know, Newland has done very well actually made up for some soft performance in DVs and dollars. Uh, but I continue to stay invested. We have a small exposure. Hopefully, hopefully uh, things will get better this quarter onwards. Okay. All right. Uh, those are uh, some of the pharma names that are in focus today. By the way, the mid-cap index is up about seven-tenths of a percent. If we talk about some of the gainers, uh, interesting moves coming in IRFC. So PSUs have come back, at least you know several of them, and that's been one sto story or theme of the week. And IRFC is uh, is participating. Mankind has had a big move in the last one hour. Pull up uh, Mankind Pharma. In general, healthcare, pharma, having a good session. And Mankind is uh, also one such stock. Since we were on the subject of pharma, it's a big move on Mankind. Uh, Nifty Pharma at the day is high. Uh, any specific view on Mankind, Gurmeet? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they are also investors in our company. So I, I feel more compliant in terms of giving, giving view. But... Uh, you know, great company, uh, you know, in terms of drugs prescribed, in terms of number of prescriptions, they are, they are, they are number one in the country and, and it's, they've grown from, the promoters have a very, uh, you know, they come from a very soft, humble background from being medical reps, what they've created. So I think, I think they're doing very well in the, now in the metros where they were a little weak, they're adding more uh, generic portfolios there. Uh, the healthcare portfolio seems to be doing pretty well. Uh, and, but I think the valuations now are, are slightly on the rich side. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, more, it's more like a Pepsi, FMCG company within pharma in terms of uh, they have 12,000 MR and their drugs mostly are sold on doctor prescription for which they have the highest prescriptions. Uh, so, so not may, may not want to add at this valuation, but, you know, great stock towards something very steady and, and long term in the portfolio. 
Okay, all right. Good meet. We'll have to thank you on that note. Thanks a lot for joining in and giving us your view on a whole host of stocks. Uh, as we speak, as would be said, mankind has taken off. That's moved to the high point of the day. And some of these frontline names as well. Nestle has moved higher. That's moved to the high point of the day. Not too big a weight on the index, but that's moved up. You have Titan as well that's participating. And Bharti Airtel, that's another stock that's moved. And it's moved up in style. Let's focus on a few more names actually from the broader markets. Indus Stars, it seems the shots are getting stuck out out here because that stock from the recent low, it's up close to 10%. You have Infa Indian Metals as well. We've been telling you that ferrochrome prices have been firm. So that stock for this week is up close to around 10%. In the near term, the prices have been weak. That is for quarter four. But it appears the rate at which, uh, you know, the foreign contracts are getting closed out on Indian Metals uh, uh, ferro uh, uh, alloys. On that one, in fact, for the coming quarter, it seems the prices have perked up both in China as well as European prices. So that explains why that stock is moved up. So keep an eye out on that one. South Indian Bank is another one that's doing very, very well. So guys, just take a look at the markets. Almost 22,200 yeah. uh, 22, now. Yeah. At the high point of the day, the Nifty Bank is now doing a relative underperformance because there are so many names that are doing quite well. You know, if you look at the performance on a week-to-date basis for the Nifty, it's the Metals Index, which has done very well. That's up 4.6%. The Auto Index is up 4.5%. Realty, which got hit hard uh, in the correction that was there, you know, a month back. Realty Index has bounced back 5.3% gain for this week. PSUs are higher in trade. Uh, CPSC Index up nearly 4%. I think barring IT, which is, you know, crashed close to about 6%, FMCG closing in the red, it's been a good week. It's been a good week and it's uh, also, you know, without um, any massive participation from Reliance. Mm. These are not the biggest heavy hitters which are participating to carry <laughs> Nitro's analogy forward. Uh, it's the middle order that's nicely come together, right? The whole yeah. team is batting well. It's not just your top one or two titans that are taking it away. So it's, it's, been, a, it's been a good uh, sort of pullback. Just one more stock, ITC. The mm. weight in the Sensex will move up post that uh, stake sale. The bad you know, sale. That bad sale. Yeah. So because of that, there could be some flows that affects in the last 45 minutes or so. So I'll just need... Effective and, today. Oh, effective today. So that's an alternate note that's uh, come in there. So keep an eye out on that one as well. Small flows, but it could have some kind of impact. In fact, as you speak, uh, it's uh, you know, so started moving up, right? Spiking absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yep. So uh, it's a good looking screen with almost all the key indices, Sensex, Nifty, Midcap, all of them tracking a gain of Seven tenths of a percent, so moving higher in style. We'll uh, take a break on that note, come back on the other side, and Karthik Kumar from Access Mutual Fund will join in with some perspective.
Welcome back. You're with us on Closing Bell and it's turning out to be a pretty good close to the week and we are, uh, you know, just a little over half an hour to go into it. So it seems the Bulls have managed to wrestle control back. Karthik Kumar is joining in and he uh, manages some funds at Access Mutual Fund. Karthik, great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining in. So what have you made of the slight wobble that the market witnessed? I only call it a wobble because, you know, 3-4% uh, index level correction, uh, perhaps not much of a correction, right? And look at it, the Nifty has cruised its way back to 22,100 plus. So mm -hmm. what's the overall stance uh, and how are you looking at both the large cap space and the, the broader markets now? So as you rightly put it, it's it's been just a wobble. Uh, we obviously are coming off a very strong 2023 and especially strong quarter four of 2023. So it was only natural that uh, the market uh, sees some uh, sideways movements, sideways movements, and there were other things that added to it. Uh, but we remain quite constructive on the markets itself. Uh, while we think over the next uh, quarter or so, at an index level, the markets might be range-bound, given that politics takes center stage, not just here, uh, but globally as well. But we think there will be plenty of stock selection and sector selection opportunities through which you can add uh, value to the portfolio. So I think it will be a good environment for active fund managers in general, because in sideways uh, or uh, uh, range-bound markets, the return dispersion between stocks tend to be quite high. All right. Hi, Karthik. Good afternoon. Nigel on this side and good to see you in. So stock specific is the name of the game. But, you know, one sector that's done very, very well is autos and auto ancillaries. Mm -hmm. uh, what, how, do you, how are you all positioned out there between autos and auto ancillaries? And within autos, what's the theme mm -hmm. you're the most bullish on? Is it the CV cycle, the PV, the two wheelers? What is it? Two wheelers have already seen a big run in the last one year or so. Mm -hmm. So... Uh as you rightly pointed out, this uh, two-wheeler space looks good from a growth visibility forecast. So I remain uh, quite bullish on uh, two-wheelers. And within two-wheelers, uh, I remain more, uh, I have a slightly higher tilt towards two-wheelers and uh, auto ancillaries in general. Um, as you rightly pointed out, two-wheeler companies in general reported uh, uh, pretty strong numbers. And uh, uh, the, uh, the growth visibility still remains pretty, uh, pretty high. And if uh, exports do uh, start picking up as is expected through the course of the year. I think that situation only gets better. So mm. we remain bullish on autos and uh, uh, auto ancillaries in general, with two-wheeler being uh, the focus there. Uh, Karthik, your underweight IT technology names, how yeah. much more of a earnings downgrade do you expect for the IT large caps or even in terms of a PED rating? What do you mm. expect in the next 12 months for IT? Okay, so we've been I, we've been under I, I've been underweight IT for quite some time now, uh, and the reason is I think the street still quite uh, the street expectations still remain a bit elevated uh, for FY twenty five and twenty six, and we've been seeing constant earnings cuts uh, across the space uh, even leading up to the event yesterday. So what happened yesterday in in terms of incremental data point only keeps that uh, pace going. So I think there's still downside to earnings estimates at a at a second sector level, uh, which is why I continue to remain under, underweight uh, that space in general. Okay. Um, what would be the biggest portfolio overweights for you right now? So in terms of overweight, I continue to remain uh, overweight on autos, as I mentioned, two-wheelers and auto ancillaries. Uh, we also remain overweight in the healthcare space. And uh, we also, uh, and I'm also overweight power, power plays as well. Okay, so since you brought up power, let me take up that third uh, segment first because, you know, the narratives are great and we're talking about more uh, thermal capacity, which will probably require, uh, you know, more inputs throughout the value chain. There's the whole green uh, green transition, renewables, etc. So within power, are you looking at uh, utilities? Are you looking at power equipment manufacturers, transformer companies, grid companies? What part of it? So within uh, within part we have a good mix of exposure actually both in terms of generation and in terms of transmission. As you uh, rightly pointed out, there is uh, there is a structural demand out there. Plus the uh, uh, government and policy in general is quite supportive of, the, of that space. And if you add to it the fact that uh, the valuations in that space is uh, is reasonable with good dividend yield, uh, that only adds uh, that only adds to the attractiveness of that sector there. Mm. Karthik, uh, you know, at current reckoning, your preference mm. would still be more towards the large caps in comparison to the mid and small caps because they have outperformed so much in the last 12 months? So it's 
with uh, with regards to my strategy it, it is less of a focus on which cap space it is it's more about an okay. opportunity at stock level so mm -hmm. uh, right now i've i have a book which is around 65% give or take large cap and the other 35% spread across mid and small cap and that's been the distribution for some time now so it's less to do about the about the allocation to the space but more uh, to do with stock selection uh, but as you rightly hint at which is uh, mid cap and small cap had a, have had a fair bit of run and uh, revaluation in general so i think now it basically comes down to picking the right spaces within mid cap and small cap uh, rather than looking at it as a as a whole as a as a bunch uh, as a one single entity got it okay 65 35% just one more question uh, the psu stocks they've got everyone's imagination you know for the last many years everyone said this time it's going to fizzle out, this time it's going to fizzle out. Well, the stocks didn't do double, triple, they did even better than that. But to be yeah. fair, even the financial performance improved a lot of these companies. You know, the guidance they gave the markets, the achieving of those, the profitability improved itself. Yeah. Uh, how are you all positioned on the PSU themes? Because that's really been the big theme and that's been the big leader of this um, market. Uh, as you rightly pointed out, with, within PSUs, what you've noticed is that uh, if you look at it from a very quantitative perspective, the quality of these companies, uh, when you look at uh, ratios across balance sheet, cash flow, income statement, and if you look at the trends therein, uh, the trends have consistently improved. Uh, so uh, I completely support your thesis that over time, the, the quality of these companies have improved from what they were as a baseline case a few years back, and which is reflected in the fact that the markets have recognized this over time. Um, and we do have reasonable uh, PSU uh, presence across sectors. Uh, as I talked about, there is uh, there is a reasonable presence within the power space, within oil and gas space, and uh, even some selectively within the financials as well. So we are well distributed in terms of just the exposure to PSUs across sector. And I still think there is uh, room to grow there if you look at uh, uh, room for stocks to perform there if you, uh, if you pick and choose uh, uh, your bets in that space. Uh, Karthik? two uh, segments of the market which have underperformed. One is QSR and the other mm. one is specialty chemicals due to subdued demand conditions, uh, prices mm. of, you know, agrochemicals and chemicals have been on the lower side due to the issues in China, etc. Do you mm. expect any of either these two or both these sectors to mean revert and maybe the cycle is turning? Any signs? So far, uh, I don't see through purely from a data perspective, I don't see a pickup in earnings or I don't see a change in uh, uh, preference or positioning in both those spaces. So I think I, while they may be good bets in the longer run, in the near term, I still believe there is uh, still uh, some time to go before that both those areas start looking attractive. Okay, um, just a, a word on uh, financials as well and how you are sort of looking at the breakup. It's a pretty large basket. On one hand, there is this whole eternal hope that large banks, uh, particularly private banks, that will you know, finally start performing and that big move will happen. It has been eluding us till now. But on the other hand, you've got a lot of the capital market players, I mean, the, whether it's the brokers or the exchanges, and those stocks have been going through the roof. So where is your positioning? How are you sort of navigating financials? So within financials, I've been uh, underweight the large private banks. Uh, and most of my tilt has been towards uh, selectively towards some PSU banks and then some uh, towards NBFCs and capital market plays, as you pointed out. Uh, I still see growth visibility being much stronger in that space. Growth momentum which being much stronger in the subsectors uh, that I kind of touched on compared to the private banking space, which is why uh, uh, I still continue to hold that position and be underweight within the private uh, la large bank uh, uh, subsector within financials. Uh, Karthik, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, joining in. Um, enjoy your uh, long weekend. We will slip into a very short break. On the other side, we'll get you a check on what Dealing Rooms is saying in our segment, D Street Chatter. We'll also get you a few BTSD calls from our technical experts.
Welcome back. You are with us on Closing Bell and we're counting down. It's about half an hour to go before this week winds up and we get into the festive weekend and the festivities are getting even better because they're timed also with the kicking off of the Indian Premier League. It is India's biggest sporting event. IPL kicks off today with a blockbuster clash between the Royal Challengers uh, Bengaluru and defending champions, the Chennai Super Kings. CSK will have a major change, of course, with MS Dhoni stepping down from captaincy in favour of uh, Ruturaj Gaikwad. RCB will take to the field with a brand new jersey and a change in franchise name. To talk about, of course, what this bonanza, this festival of domestic cricket, as it's called, what uh, this, you know, perhaps heralds for players, for viewers, we've got uh, Srinivas Rao, group editor of sports at Network 18. Srinivas, great to have you on. I guess uh, you're perhaps all set, as are the fans. And I must say that, uh, I, I guess yesterday's news was, I don't know, was it a real surprise or was it expected? Uh, the iconic MSD finally deciding to sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, bat for yeah. his teams, but not not yeah, from so the pitch this time around. That was a big announcement, right? I don't know. No, so in hindsight, if you were to really ask me what was the surprise, uh, you know, naming Ravindra Jadeja uh, was the surprise. I, I wasn't expecting that when it happened. But where Ruthu is concerned, you know, uh, I have always said this uh, in some of my shows that uh, uh, Ruthu was always being groomed for the for uh, potential leadership in the future. Uh, it was only a matter of time. At some point in time, he would have been given a leadership role in CSK. They had identified him uh, in this uh, category uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, he's shown the right skills, the right temperament, the right attitude uh, to kind of uh, come and grab that space. And uh, it was lying vacant for a very long time. So I think it's only um, it's only understandable that CSK finally decided to kind of uh, give uh, you know put him in those big shoes. And while MSD is still around, so you know kind of he gets a hang of how things uh, uh, should function. But that said, I don't really see MSD going anywhere. You know. Uh, he may he may not be an active player, but he may be, may continue to be an impact player, uh, you know, this year and the next. Or he may continue to be a mentor in the dugout, a player come mentor, something of that sort. You know, the kind of role that Shane Warne played for Rajasthan Royals uh, almost 13, 14 years ago. So I really yeah. don't see MSG going anywhere, but it also gives uh, Ritu the kind of cushion required to step into the space. I can tell you this, that when it was MSD at the crease, that even, uh, you know, oldies like myself and people who are not, you know, very frequent cricket watchers, even they would definitely tune in to any of the IPL matches. So, that's one. But, you know, speaking about uh, captaincy changes, Mumbai Indians deals with one as well. So, what are MI's chances this time around? Well, uh, two parts. I'll cut this into two parts. Number one, captaincy. What MI did in terms of, you know, getting Hardik on board, Trust me, mm. in a year or two years from now, if not right away after the season, the move is going to be seen as the the move of IPL. It's it's a trend-setting move. Getting Hardik Pandya from another franchise, taking all that it takes. You know, there are so many franchises right now that are struggling from a leadership standpoint. So many franchises that don't know how to identify a captain who can serve in the long run. More franchises are first picking their teams and then figuring out how to pick their leader. What Mumbai Indians did, in fact, is identify that they had let go of a homegrown uh, boy, you know, who went to another franchise, showed great leadership skills. They said, OK, no, what? This guy can serve us as a captain over the next three to five years. Why not do all that it takes to get him home? So I think that is a brilliant move of, on part of MI. It's, as I said, it's, going, it's a trend-setting move and will count a lot for it. Uh, going forward. Now, as far as MI itself is concerned, listen, uh, you know, the mega auction year before last, you know, we all know that MI, uh, you know, couldn't really get enough bowlers on board. But then, since then, look at the way they've gone about correcting themselves. Look at the way they've gone about bringing those small changes, making those small changes to the side. <laughs> so I think from there onwards, today where MI stands, uh, yeah, they are a spinner shot. They are a quality spinner shot. But I'll still put them in the top four. When I look at all the 10 teams, well, they do give me a confidence. Uh, the batting lineup, especially, gives me the kind of confidence that uh, they can make it to the top four. Okay, all right. Unfortunately, we don't have you on video. Would have uh, loved to chat a bit more, but I think we'll do that as uh, you know things progress. We're only just getting started. It's a long two-month festival. Uh, so let the game begin, I guess. Thank you very much, Srinivas. Good having you on the show today. Well, uh, with that, let's move on. It is time for uh, D Street Chatter. We've got Nimesh in the house. 
Nimesh, so big, big recovery. And I think it's all like the market's rallying, IPL is starting, Holi's around the corner. It's a truncated week. I think the Bulls yes. couldn't have asked for more, right? Well, absolutely. <laughs> a, a good close to the week, right? I mean, for the second day running, we're building on to the yesterday's momentum. So another uh, more than half a percent move on the Nifty. Even the broader markets have recovered. Having said that, I understand there's going to be a small market at close, basket selling in broader market stocks. So that's something we need to you know, account for in terms of FI flows. But otherwise, uh, from a sector perspective, autos have done well today. Pharma stocks have rebounded. It, it's a couple of names were part of my chatter list as well. That there is there is buying interest back in pharma stocks. So that's that's doing that's doing well today. I guess uh, the way uh, you know the Nifty has bounced back from that uh, 2800 levels. Uh, to, uh, you know that looks like it's acting as a very strong support now. So on the downside, 2800, 21650 uh, could be a big level to watch on the downside. But looks like the way markets have bounced back, this momentum continues, and the fact that the volumes are going to be lower side. Look, it's a truncated week, so maybe you'll see some big moves in individual stocks next week because you know, a lot of institutions, a lot of uh, participation would be on the lower side. Okay, all right. Uh, Nimesh, what about individual stocks? What are you tracking? Well, so, you know, a couple of large blocks. I'll start with that. There were two large blocks today. One is InSwift Lab, just got done 10 minutes back. 10% equity got changed hands today. And I understand it's a clean out trade uh, from, uh, from an institutional investor. So, uh, disclosures could be interesting there in InSwift Labs. The second name is Capacite Infra. Even there, there was a large block, 40 lakh shares. Little over three and a half percent equity got changed hands. There, I understand uh, one of the minority promoter uh, entity was a seller, and a very large US-based fund was a buyer in today's block. So the disclosures there also would be quite interesting. Uh, the second name is Vodafone Idea. Uh, it, that's been a big, not a big mover, but big volumes in today's trade. Uh, the stock is, is is buzzing in trade as well. I understand the the domestic road shows have started uh, for, for the company for the fundraising. So all eyes will be the EGM on second. Post the EGM potential fundraising could happen. So th that's why the, the, the road shows have started. The second, the third name is Birla Soft. Within the IT names, well, the entire IT basket is recovered from the initial lows from in today's market. But Birla Soft stands out because there is, there is a small contra buying as well from larger FI. So the stock has corrected from the peak. Now at these levels around 720, 730, there is buying interest from larger FI. So that's, that's Birla Soft. And the last is Anderson Bank. Uh, a small move in today's trade, the volumes are on the higher side. Uh, again, the delivery volumes could be quite high in today's market. But from a trigger point of view, uh, the next big trigger would be as in when the promoters get an approval from RBI to further raise the stakes. So that's the big trigger to watch out. But some bit of buying this is back in Indusind Bank as well. Okay. All right, Nimesh. Thank you very much for all the buzz, all the action from dealing rooms today. Uh, with that, we're back to uh, Rahul. He's uh, back with some more ideas. Rahul, so final sort of half an hour coming through. Anything fresh? Any more ideas cropping up on your screen? I was looking at Apollo Hospitals, you know, stellar move on the stock. And, uh, you know, the, the stock continues to look like a breakout to me. Fantastic volumes because, again, these are not just price moves. You know, we're trying to see uh, what's the kind of backing it has in terms of the support level, in terms of the volume. The indicator setup looks good. Uh, so short term, if you're looking at, uh, you know, just a near term target, you would probably peg it at around 6580 to 6600 levels. But again, uh, this is a stock which we believe should actually be a portfolio stock, not a BTSD or short-term trade, uh, you know, which it still looks like. Uh, we clearly see the stock moving past even the 7K level. 6120 is a strong support for the stock, so keep a stop loss below that when attempting longs. Uh, Strides Pharma, another one which looks interesting. Use this correction as an opportunity, in our opinion. 750 is very good support. It seems to be holding that well. Keep a stop loss below that. Uh, if you're near term trading, 810 would be my target. If you have more time, I think the stock can again show you a new intermediate high, uh, 845 to 850, broadly speaking. I'll add one more to the list. Kotak Bank uh, could steadily have a small trot up to about 1800 to 1805. One could look at uh, buying that with a 1765 stop loss. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot uh, for that, uh, Raul. Well, by the way, just pull up uh, the Nifty. The Nifty has come off close to around 80, 90 points from the high point of the day. A few stocks that are coming off. You had Nestle that was doing very, very well. That's trimmed its game. So pull up the intraday chart out there. Tech Mahindra was trying to fight back. Well, Tech Mahindra has slipped as well. Just take a look at the chart on Nestle. BPCL, well, that's trimmed its games as well. So that's come in for some selling. Coal India was doing was well in the green uh, earlier today. Well, that has been has seen some selling. So both the Nifty and the Nifty Bank have come off a little bit from the high point uh, of the day. Well, uh, let's uh, let's get you some opinion actually that we got earlier today. We had spoken to Lawrence Blanco from CLSA. 
Let's listen into excerpts from that conversation that we had with him. You know, Nifty's got roughly 5% downside, but the mid-cap index from current level still has roughly 10% downside. So we think there is still some relative underperformance, further volatility in mid-cap. Current correction unfolds down to the 200-day uh, moving average, and, and that's basically around the 20,200. It will be slightly grinding higher, even if we run through this correction. So we're looking at about 20,200 to uh, 20,000. Um, 300. So, so that's where we think the floor would be and, and a bit of time consolidating around that level. But like I said earlier, it doesn't break that longer term uptrend and, and we still got targets uh, sitting around the 23,000 area. Reliance does stand out. If you remember that the stock broke out of a two year trading range that you've still got longer term upside targets of 34,000 to 35,500. And this current uh, pullback that you've seen between 2600 and 2800 would be, I think, an opportunity to add exposure there. And with that limited downside, it should give you a relative outperformance. Okay, that was Lawrence Belanco of CLSA earlier saying that maybe a little more correction, 5 to 10% on the Nifty and uh, the broader market indices. Perhaps that can't be ruled out just now. Well, let's uh, move to our next guest on the show. We have Hemang Jani joining in. Hemang, great to have you on. So it's a, it's a good pullback, right? Let me ask you that question. Do you get the sense, looking at the screen last two, three days, do you feel that the broader market correction, cool-off, sell-off, whatever you call it, do you get the sense that it's over? Yeah, Subhi, good afternoon. Uh, yes, I do think uh, that uh, the correction across uh, the broader market, mid-cap, small-cap, appears to be over. If you look at the data in detail, the number of uh, scripts hitting the lower circuit, the advanced decline, I think, uh, you know, it's clearly reflecting that uh, pain is subsiding. However, the volumes are not looking that great when you look at the overall uh, cash market segment, maybe because of March, because, because of some other factors, but clearly it is giving you a lot of uh, comfort because the incremental money moves in market in a big way when you see stability. And uh, the movement is clearly reflecting that. So I do think that uh, you know the market should uh, stabilize and see some more uh, you know upside over the next few days. Also, we have to bear in mind that the global markets have been quite uh, resilient and strong, and we have been underperforming. So there is a lot of catch up to do. Okay. All right. Hi, Among. Uh, good afternoon. Good to see you. When you know before we talk about Amber, which is next on our radar, I wanted to ask you about the auto stocks. And what are you making of this big move on Maruti? You know, there are various, uh, there's some talk that maybe, in fact, there are some flows that are moving in there. But fundamentally, what do you think? So, Nigel, a very strong move uh, across uh, auto names, but more so uh, in case of uh, Maruti, uh, primarily because uh, there were reports that uh, the GST plus says, which is 43% for hybrid cars, uh, could come down to 27%. So some of the uh, newly launched hybrid variants, you know, particularly Maruti has rolled out few and uh, Toyota is a popular hybrid, uh, you know, uh, which is there. Uh, once the duty comes down to 27%, the effective uh, price cut could be anywhere from about 3 to 7 lakhs, which is quite significant. So I think that is what is driving uh, the auto stocks and two-wheeler. I think the, the Vahan data for 19 days is showing a uh, decent growth across uh, two wheeler names particularly hero motor aisha to some extent bajaj also so that is what is actually driving the stock prices okay auto is definitely having a good good rally uh, hemang of course you know, today the big debate has been around it whether there is any reason to perhaps uh, cut positions or take some profits off because stocks had a pretty decent rally in the last one two months barring you know this month where there's been a a correction. What's your sense? So clearly, two uh, you know factors have uh, driven the sentiment down. Uh, of course, the Accenture on call, the growth outlook on the you know uh, outsourcing part is not that encouraging. Also, we had a big uh, block of PCS. So typically, you see the underperformance come through. So till we see the quarterly numbers and we get more clarity about what kind of growth really are we looking at. I think the uh, sector as a whole uh, should remain a uh, bit subdued. Uh, but uh, what is very interesting to see is that whenever you see a sharp cut, let's say three or four percent that we saw in the morning, it's typically uh, people use that as a you know buying opportunity. So you see a good pullback. So I think TCS or HCM, if you see a sharp cut on a bad day, 
I think it would be a good idea to slowly, you know, buy into it uh, for the quarterly results. Okay, all right. Uh, Hevansh, stay with us. Let's focus on Amber. CLSA has a buy rating on the stock. Why, uh, the, will the recent correction be an attractive entry point? Well, Upasana joins us to uh, break down the note for us. Uh, Upasana. Well, CLSA has upgraded the stock to a buy rating and with a target price of 4,300 per share. It says that the recent price correction, that is about 14% in one month, provides an attractive entry point for Amber. The correction is likely driven by two factors, that is market weakness and near-term earnings concerns. But Amber has highlighted that the recovery in REC segment is likely to start from H2 FY25 onwards and the new initiatives would gradually pick up. Thus, the near-term softness in earnings is well flagged off. Uh, the brokerage also assumes that the REC market share will fall from 29% to 19% in FY30 and to 10% uh, by FY40 is what they have highlighted. As the other segments like non-RAC, mobility and electronics are likely to grow faster and contribute about 50% of the revenue in next five years, which currently stands at 27% as of FY23. The execution on electronics, mobility and large applications are also a key factor to watch out for is what the brokerage has highlighted. Hence, they have raised the target price from 4,130 to 4,300 and upgraded the rating from buy to outperform. Okay, I got that. Uh, thanks very much, Rupasana. Yes, and that call did work very well for Amber today. Stock's been holding up positive throughout the trading session. There we go, a four and a half percent up even now. On that note, take a very quick break. We'll come back and get some final thoughts in with Hema. Welcome back. Some other pockets of strength today include telecoms. Vodafone idea is up nearly 5%, but now 
you've got Inda stars surging towards a 10% gain. Bharti Airtel has been strong since morning, 1.5% up on that. But look at Inda stars. And Vodafone ID, of course, is uh, giving it company. Apart from that, real estate names are also higher in trade. Uh, so Shobha Developers has come off from the day's high. In the morning, it was you know up a lot more. But now it's up close to about 4% on that. But Purvankara, 5% up. Prestige, up more than 5%. Brigade is up 3.5%. India Bulls Real Estate, these are stocks where you are seeing a fair amount of action. But Shobha, as you can see, has come off. In the afternoon, I think it was up close to about 6 to 7% on Shobha Developers. In conversation with uh, Hema, Hema, any thoughts on Inda Stars? From its 52-week low of 135, the stock has more than doubled. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of a binary event, right? Not binary, but a lot depends on what happens with Vodafone Idea. Its future is linked to Vodafone Idea and the payment of its receivables. Your thoughts on Inda Stars? I think, uh, Rima, the reason why we are seeing so much of uh, action and interest in Indus Star is because uh, the way uh, Idea has gone about, uh, you know, um, getting uh, its 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 main debt related issue, uh, you know, getting a bit of a relaxation and possibility of a revival is leading to some sort of uh, interest in uh, Indus. Also, uh, we had a major block deal, and now. There is a possibility of another, you know, block deal uh, uh, come through, uh, you know, around current price levels. So once that is done, maybe the overhang of the seller will get over, which is typically good for the stock. And uh, you know, in a market where you have a, you know, some sort of monopoly when it comes to the tower business, where you have only two major players, uh, so definitely people would be slightly more excited and. Uh, we do think that there is some more upside left, about 15 to 18 percent upside left for interest hours from current price point. Mm, okay, so looking at further upsides on Indus. By the way, there's a little bit of a basket sell that Nimesh was talking about. Perhaps some of that came through because we are off the highest levels. The market will probably, at least the Nifty, will go home with gains of just about 60 to 70 points right now. And uh, look at the problem areas. The larger banks, not all of them are you know participating. Axis Bank, if you pull up the intraday chart, you'll see the, the cool-off that happened on an Axis. Even Reliance, Reliance never really did much today, but uh, even now it's sort of ending on a very, very flat note. SBI lost a lot of its momentum. You see that Axis chart, you know, first one hour looked very promising, but nothing really materialized, and that's that's been Reliance's trajectory today. Hemang, uh, uh, specifically on uh, on either some of the large private sector banks or or Reliance, uh, it, what is the call and where would you allocate fresh money? Surbhi, I think Reliance uh, clearly uh, looks like in a, in a good spot, uh, both from, a, you know, the newer businesses, be it geo retail or uh, the O2C. I think, uh, you know, prices and, and overall things are looking better. Stock has not performed as much. But I think from a current price point and even the new uh, forays into the Know, new energy business, I think people will get more excited. Uh, so Reliance clearly is one of the preferred picks. Private sector banks, I think uh, it's time to kind of uh, have some outperformance, particularly uh, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, uh, Kotak has seen a bit of an uptick. So I think people are slightly more positive when it comes to the entire bank NFT space and within that, some of the private sector banking space. So risk reward wise, they are looking good, uh, particularly in this quarterly numbers. Once we have more clarity, it will reinforce the confidence. Okay, all right, Hemang, we appreciate you joining in. Thanks a lot for giving us your view on a whole host of stocks. Wishing you a good Friday evening and happy Holi in advance. May it be as colorful as ever, Hemang. Thank you, Naina. All right. Well, uh, you know, at the start of the show, I was talking about Indian metals uh, and uh, ferroys. Uh, you know, we are telling you that the prices globally were moving up. The stock has now moved to the high point of the day, but that's not because of uh, the fundamentals that we were talking about in terms of prices, but there's an exchange notice that's come in there that the board will be meeting on uh, 29th of March to consider a special dividend. So explains why that stock has moved up. I think we should get that for you on the screen as well. They were getting, they've got some compensation from a couple of coal blocks of around 130 crores, I think, 130 to around 150 crores. Total amount they had to receive was around 350 crores. 
So because of that special dividend meeting that is just uploaded on the exchanges, that's the reason, in fact, the stock is up. Though the fundamentals as well were supporting. Absolutely, uh, one of the you know good movers in the mid cap space, and there were several others as well because uh, the mid cap index now because the Nifty had that little bit of an adjustment that played out a little bit of a basket sell perhaps, but uh, the mid cap index has most of its gains intact and it is far uh, far closer to the day's high, so to speak. The advance decline ratio has been very positive today. Fifteen hundred stocks advancing. Just about 800 on the declining side. Large caps, obviously the problem was IT, IT and IT. So if we take a look at it, uh, Infosys, TCS, uh, some of the other names like Wipro as well. These large cap stocks basically down between 1 and 3%, depending on which one you're looking at. LTI, Mindtree is the, the weakest of the lot, about 3% lower. And then the spoiler was in the form of uh, private sector banks. Axis couldn't hold up, about half a percent lower. HDFC Bank, again a non-starter, non-performer. Kotak at the flat line. So the banks weren't fighting, even SBI for that matter, lost its morning momentum and ended with just about a, a quarter percent increase. But then there, there were other stocks that kind of made up Well, for it. auto, right? Auto in top gear. And auto has been one of the best performing indices this week also. Hero Motor Corp, Maruti Suzuki. These are your top two nifty gainers for the day with an up move of 3.5%, Bajaj Auto in the fast lane, Apollo Hospitals, UPL, Sun Pharma, SBI Life up, in, up and about in trade. But you know, uh, the mid-cap action, uh, the advanced decline ratio ends in favour of the gaining side, but not as strong as what we had started the day with. Well, it was difficult the last 16 minutes, right? The markets were doing a bit of a ping-pong out there. We mm -hmm. thought we were going to go, go to around 22,200. The Nifty Bank not able to conquer the 47,000 odd mark. I've been making this point even this morning, even the last few sessions, that the Nifty Bank needs to take leadership, get back towards 48,500. If that happens, then the Nifty gets that crucial knockout punch. For the time being, that's missing. And that's why, yes, we go home with gains, but we come off close to around 100 points from the high point of the day. But happy weekend, guys. We're and, done with <laughs> and next right week is you. just a three-day week. <laughs> No, absolutely. I think we'll, we'll, we'll quibble about the participation. We're sandwiched between holidays. Volumes, all of that. But I mean, Friday anyway is a, is a global holiday. Yeah. And Monday, I think we'll just be partying and playing. I, you know, I'm the numbers man, right? So 72 hours of a break you have right now. Come back for 72 hours and, and go back for another 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a nice way to end Closing Bell from the entire team. Thank you for watching. But don't go anywhere. Our special Friday offering, Smart Money, is up next.